Ground Control to Tom the Cat by Joseph Clift. Read by Steve Parker. Space, the final front ear. That's what I thought the narrator said when I was a kid. Then, in space, no one can hear you scream. There's no sound in a vacuum. I guess the thoughts of many politicians must be profound silence. I'm looking out the portal of my capsule as I write this. Well, I was, before I picked up a pen to write. There's something comforting in holding an old-fashioned physical pen amidst the high tech that surrounds me. I've no idea why I'm writing this. No one will ever read it. I guess I'm talking to myself, but as it's not out loud, I haven't gone mad. Yet. I can't believe I wanted to travel to Mars. I've been to Norfolk. That should have sated my hunger for a land before humankind. It wasn't as if we were expecting to find E.T. cycling in the craters. We were looking for microbial life. Oh, and to colonize. I mean, we have a beautiful blue planet home, but let's go and colonize a place as rocky and uninhabited as the Mariana Trench. Mm. There were six of us, and we were really going to colonize Mars. A part of our mission was to produce the first human born outside of the Earth. After building a base, which would have made putting together an IKEA wardrobe a breeze in comparison. Although, knowing my luck with women, they'd have set up a menage a cinque and I'd be back with Gillian Anderson and a sore wrist. Oh, I'm glad I have a cyanide pill. It's cold comfort and cyanide poisoning is very unpleasant, but it sure beats the alternative. At least I have some autonomy over when I go. Although, time. <laughs> that has no meaning out here. I mean, what good is Earth time and days and nights and birdsong and twilight in the void of space? <sighs> Seriously, I must have been crazy to leave home. But, it's a human craziness. I mean, take my cat. Please, take my cat. <laughs> oh, the old jokes are the best. Oh, maybe they aren't. Anyway, my cat. If he ever looked at the night sky, it was to see if a flying bat snack was around. I'll never forget the first bat he brought home. Yes, there were others. It was hanging out of Tom's male cat. Yes, I'm a funny guy. Tom's mouth, waving one wing like Dracula at a virgin's window. If it tasted as bad as it smelled, it must have been almost as bad as the local chicken shop's wings. I don't think they've changed the oil since Iran was Persia. Anyway, Tom, the cat, was just content to be. Hmm? I think he was an existentialist. He certainly looked at me like Sartre might have looked at me. He always looked at me like that. Even when I fed him. Even before I told him I was going to Mars and he couldn't come with me and would have to go and live with my mother in Staines. His look was always c'est la vie. Very French cat, Tom was. Very insouciant. Ah, I miss Tom. And I'd probably tuck into a bat with him now, or some of those chicken shop wings cooked in oil thicker than a reality show contestant. Vitamin pills and rehydrated food gets old very quickly. It's not long before you get Looney Tunes type visions of consuming a colleague. <laughs> Uh, but a barbecue on a spacecraft probably contravenes health and safety. Maybe I should have sneaked Tom on board. I always liked French food. <laughs> jokes. Jokes. I can only imagine how bad Tom would have tasted on a diet of bats, rats, mice and the best-selling cat food. <sighs> so... How did I end up on my own in a space capsule which has already hurtled past Mars like a politician evading a question? I could say I went crazy from claustrophobia and rehydrated noodles and endlessly imagining Gillian Anderson and killed my colleagues. But all five were fitter and stronger than me. Believe it or not, I was here because of my intelligence. Please don't look at me like Tom. It's true. 
seriously, it's true. Okay, I was here because I'm an Adonis and a sex machine. One careful owner with a bad wrist. And I was essentially the stud of the mission. I was going to populate Mars like a modern-day Genghis Khan populated his way all the way to the island of Ireland. DNA is one of my fields. Told you I was intelligent. So, how did I end up hurtling past Mars on my own? Please don't tell Tom, but... Uh, can I bear to write down the truth even though no one will ever read this? Tom would have no problem writing the next line, if he had a thumb, opposable or otherwise. He owned every Mr. Beaner, every screw-up, every murder and depravity with an AND expression. I think he was a sociopath. A sociopathic existentialist bat-eater. I'm suddenly wondering why I gave him house room. I'm literally shuddering at the thought. He even tore down my poster of Gillian Anderson. I'd had it since my teens. It had been blue tacked to the wall at the end of my bed. It was reasonably unfaded, given my eyes had stared at it like twin red giants. I'd never been able to serve as well at table tennis after discovering Gillian. Maybe it's because Tom started out as a kitten. I never would have bought a fully grown bat-eating existentialist sociopath. No, I bought a ball of fur with a cute little voice and eyes like an adagio. He even kept his switchblade claws concealed until he was of Gillian Anderson poster eviscerating age. So how did I end up hurtling past Mars on my own? Please don't tell Tom, but do blame Gillian Anderson.